This is WESTERM, a GPU accelerated terminal emulator written in Rust that a lot of well-known developers seem to really like. It's cross-platform, insanely fast, and highly customizable. I mean, you can even change the cursor border color. But why would you use this instead of Ghosty, Warp, or another terminal? Three words, built in multiplexer. Sorry, Tmux. So let's get into it. And before we do, make sure you hit that subscribe button. When you first install and open up Westterm, it will look pretty basic, and there aren't many options in the UI for you to change things like in other terminals, because everything is configured in Lua. But it's nice that it's automatically picked up my fish shell config, and it's got my autocomplete plugin, as well as Starship. So we'll first start off by customizing Wes Terms look. And because I'm coming from Warp, I'm going to try as much as I can to make it look like this. First, in our home directory, we're going to create a .westterm Lua file, and in here, we're going to change a few things. We're going to import the Westterm API and create a variable called config that will run the config builder function. Then we have to return the config and we can write our config in this section of the file. So first, what I'm gonna do is add a comment called general, and this is going to change the font size to 19 and I'll save the file, which has made the font bigger. So I'll zoom out a tiny bit. Next, we'll change the line height to 1.2. We'll change the font using the West term font function to Blex Mono Nerd Font. Finally, we'll change the color scheme to Tokyo Night underscore Night. And now if we save this file, things start to look a lot better. Next, we'll change the color of the cursor to match our color scheme, which will be config colors. And this will be cursor BG. And we'll change this to a light blue. Then if we save, you'll see the cursor's changed. But if we were to split the tab, you'll see here that the cursor has a border of white instead of blue. So let's change that by doing a cursor border of the same color, which fixes that problem. This is looking good, but I'm not a huge fan of this title bar up here and of the tabs. So let's get rid of those. To do that, we need to adjust the window decorations. Notice there's an underscore here and an S. I made the mistake of doing a dot and it took me a while to figure that out. And we'll change this to resize, which means there won't be a title bar, but you can still resize the window. Next, we're going to use the enable tab bar option and we'll set that to false. And now you can see the tabs are gone and the terminal looks much cleaner. Now you may have noticed that if I press Command T to create a new tab, open something up and then press Command W to close it, I get this message asking if I really want to kill the tab. Now I don't want this message, so let's edit the config so it doesn't appear. To do that, I'm going to add a new comment called key bindings, and this is going to contain config.keys. And in here, we're going to paste something from earlier which basically says if I press Command and W that you close the current pane, but don't show the confirmation message. If you want to know more about actions in WESTERM, you can press Shift Control P to have a look at the control plane. And then we can see the close current pane option is over here. But you can also take a look at the documentation. So now if I create a new tab and open a file, then press Command W, it doesn't ask me anything. While we're here, let's make a few more key binding changes. WESTERM supports horizontal and vertical splits, but the keyboard shortcuts for them aren't intuitive. For example, if I want to do a vertical split, it's shift control option percentage. And for a horizontal split, it's shift control alt and quotation mark. So let's make this a bit easier. For a horizontal split, I'm going to say the option should be command and D, which is similar to the way things work in warp. Now here, there's a domain option that says current pane domain. Basically, it means when you create a split, do it in the domain you're already in. So no matter if you're in a local or remote domain, keep the split in the same domain. And for a vertical split, I'm going to say use the D key again, but this time it should be Command and Shift followed by D. So let's save it and try it out. If I press Command D, it will create a vertical split. And if I press Shift Command D, it will create a horizontal one. Perfect. Let's press Command W to close the panes. And one thing I'd like to do is if I wanted to clear the terminal, I want to press Command K. But for some reason, that's not working in my West term. So let's configure that. Beneath the vertical split key binding, again, I'm going to paste something from earlier, which is Command K to execute the clear command. So now in this tab, when I press Command K, it clears everything. You can already see how customizable you can make West term when it comes to key bindings. And if you're familiar with NeoVim, you can even create a custom leader key for a similar type of key binding. There's also the Westterm CLI that comes with the app, 
which lets you open a new window, record and replay terminal sessions using ASCII casts, interact with the multiplexing server that shows all the windows, tabs and panes, where you can also kill panes and do much, much more. If you're using Fishshell like me, make sure you add this path to your configuration for the West Term CLI to work properly. But one cool thing the CLI lets you do, which you might have already seen, is multiplexing in a remote server. This means that you can create tabs and planes without having to SSH into the server over and over again. To do that, you'll first need to set up a remote server in the West Term config, install West Term on the remote server, and then after running West Term Connect with the name of your domain, you should be able to run splits and create new tabs and still be inside your remote server. Which is amazing. I mean, it almost gets rid of my need for Tmux, but the cool features of WebTerm don't stop there. You can render images using multiple image and graphics protocols, render ligatures, hyperlinks, and there's also a quick select feature you can trigger by pressing Shift Control Space that will let you select commonly copied patterns in a terminal by pressing a character. But the question still remains why don't I just use Ghosty? Well, when I first tried Ghosty, it didn't play nice with aerospace and the fix that was suggested in the docs didn't work either. I mean, I'm not sure if things have changed since then, but West Term, in my experience, has been way more stable. And what about Warp? I think Warp is great. I love its AI features and the ability to even use them in a remote server. But after using West Term, I prefer the way it renders things, the fact it can be completely customized and its speed. I mean, West Term, hands down, is the fastest terminal I have ever used. Now, I haven't completely abandoned Warp. I'll use it time to time for debugging, which it's very good at, but right now, West Term is going to be my main terminal. Well, after I spend a few more hours configuring it. Anyway, what do you think of West Term? Have you tried it? Are you going to stick to your current terminal? Let me know in the comments, and until next time, happy coding.